finally made it. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Just great. <sighs> I guess... Thanks! All right. Hmm. Huh? Uh huh. All right. I guess. Got it. We should be able to cook here. Is this the barrier that's keeping the Zugal in that Nath mentioned? Looks like it. Our Zugal pal should be on the other side. This barrier is weird. It looks old and half finished. Plus, he said it was okay to break. I mean, we won't need it anymore once the Zugal's gone, right? So what does it matter? That thing was sturdier than you give it credit for. Really? So that's the Zugal, huh? This should be a piece of cake. Don't get careless, Law. That Zugal's in our way. I'm ready to fight it any time you are. Let's tear him up! An 
Astro Art? That's my cue. Lunar blast. Shut him down. Eat this. Blue away. Oh, oh, Bring in the Arno Crossing. Blue away. Blue away. Blue away. This one's all mine. Ignite.
Be careful not to overdo it. I'm sorry. I'll do that. What's a letter doing in a place like this? Hell if I know. I highly doubt that Zugal was trying to guard it. Still, somebody must have left it for some... <sighs> Law. Huh? What's up? Something up? It's from my old man. My dear son, I wonder how things will be between us by the time you read this. In any case, I first want to congratulate you on all that you've accomplished. Making it this far requires a strong body, fine technique, an unwavering spirit, and most of all, friends that you can count on. If you have all of that, then I, as your father, have nothing to worry about. Those things together will always keep you on the right path. That brings me to what I really wish to discuss with you. As with all of us, there will someday come a time when you'll be a grown man who can and must think and act for himself. Whether you'll live in a world where blood will no longer be spilled between Danins and Renans, when that day arrives, nobody can say. But even if peace still eludes us then, you'll have to decide how to live in this world. Listen to others with an open heart, but don't be swept away by their words. Always live on your terms. One more thing. If I ever see you again, I hope to say this to you in person. 
But neither of us knows what tomorrow may bring. Know this. Whatever you think of me, what I've done, your mother and I love you very, very much. And there's nothing in this whole world that will ever, ever change that. Your father, Zephyr. Zephyr. I... I can't believe he's only telling me all this after he's gone. What am I supposed to do with this? Zephyr once told me that living freely meant being your own master. I think he wanted to make sure you know how he felt one way or another. What you do with that knowledge is up to you. But that still doesn't explain why his father left that letter for him here, of all places. Don't forget, we were led to this place. We may well get some answers if we go back to the source of all this. Looks like we made it here in one piece. <laughs> hey. <sighs> hey. Yes. <sighs> no way. <sighs> All right. This is... <laughs> Thanks.
You okay, Law? You seem kind of quiet. I'm fine. Just feels a little weird returning home now that my dad's not here, I guess. Huh. Uh, oh! Oh, man, sorry. I didn't mean to bum you out, too. Hmm. So I guess that means you'll be visiting your dad's grave while you're here. Right, Law? His grave? What are you, nuts? There is no grave. The Rena would only destroy it the moment they found it. Back before Calaglia was liberated, dead slaves would be dumped in mass burial sites. Either that or thrown on top of a bonfire. We got used to cremating our own to deny them the pleasure. Then we'd sprinkle the ashes from high up as a way of returning them to the motherland. It's all we could do. That's the ceremony we had when my mom died, too. But that was back then, right? Kalagli is liberated now. There's nothing to stop you from raising a true grave anymore. I suppose you've got a point. Once you've been doing something for generations, though, it sort of begins to take root. It's a tradition of its own now. My dad wouldn't want that anyway. Cheap and simple, he'd say. Besides, I can't treat him differently than my mom. They might not end up meeting on the other side. I hadn't thought of it like that. Wow, imagine. The two of them reunited. Back home where they belong. They're probably watching over us right now. At one with great Dana. <laughs> There's something almost poetic about it. That's why I can't afford to screw up. If I know my pops, something as paltry as death won't stop him from coming to box my ears. Still, better than being left alone, I guess. Better than never knowing. You hear that, Dad? I'll make you proud. You'll see. We should be able to cook here. W why are you staring at me? I could ask the same thing. So this is how the Sovereign and Maiden are supposed to look. You two go great together. Law, come stand between us. Oh, sure. You want me to put something white on as well? Of course she doesn't. Take a closer look, Shion. It's a miracle. What are you talking about? This outfit. It's already got blue accents on it. So I see. Your cooking has really improved, Shion. It's because of you that I understand what makes it so fun. I'm glad everyone seems to enjoy what I make, too. I've noticed a disturbing trend that after it's your turn to cook, our ingredients tend to run really low. What's up with that? That is a good point, Law. And there's a weird difference between the amount of ingredients she prepares and how much food actually gets served. Curious. Very curious indeed. I don't know. Isn't it pretty normal for veggies to shrink a little when you fry them up? Or maybe she eats all the bad batches herself so we won't notice. Come on. I wouldn't do anything like that. Then how would you explain the difference? <clears throat> I have a theory that I wish to propose. What is it? As we all know, Xion here can have quite the appetite. I imagine she often taste tests her own food as she prepares it. By my eye, it would appear that her footprints are leaving deeper impressions as of late. Far be it from me to level such an accusation, but the facts lead me to conclude that... She's been snacking while she cooks. And yet, she still looks so slender in her clothing. Yeah, I'm kind of envious, actually. Wait a sec, are you guys trying to say she's... I'm what? Uh, nothing? Nothing. Shion, about that fight just now. Sorry about that. I was careless. I didn't come to criticize you. Just please take better care of yourself. You don't need to worry about me. In case you forgot, I 
can't exactly die anyway. It's like how you used to not care about getting beat up because you couldn't feel pain. And then I was the one to patch you up. It's the same thing. You're right. That is how I used to be. But this isn't the same. Then what do you mean? How is what's happening now different from what happened then? It's different now. Look, if you mean because you can feel pain again, I... It's because I don't want to see you getting hurt. <sighs> You're right. When I couldn't feel any pain, I put myself in all sorts of dangerous situations. I didn't listen to anybody's warnings, and I made a lot of people worried for no good reason. That was foolish. This isn't about you and me being able to take pain. I... I don't want to have to see you get hurt, Xion. It's too much for me to take. Is that a crazy thing to say? No, it isn't. And I... I definitely don't like seeing you get hurt either, Alfin. We can't expect our enemies to show us any mercy, but... I will do my best not to throw myself in harm's way out there either. How does that sound? I'm sorry if I sounded harsh earlier. I didn't mean to. I just... really want you to take better care of yourself. I will. At least, for as long as I can. Hey, Alfin. Why do you like spicy food so much, anyway? You know, I haven't thought about that before. Maybe because when I couldn't feel pain, it gave me that kick I was craving. But now that you can feel pain again, wouldn't your tastes have changed? Did you like spicy food when you were younger? Not as much as I do now. At some point, it just became something almost like an addiction, I guess. I can most certainly relate. Once you've had your fill of ordinary food, you cannot help but seek out more unusual fare. I don't think that's got anything to do with Alfin's tastes. Although I won't deny that you definitely have a thing for exotic food. The stranger the better. I just wish I could have gotten you into sweets like me, Alfin. I like food that's dense and keeps you feeling full myself. It helps you last longer when you're on the move. We all know you're a quantity over quality, kind of. What was that? Uh, nothing. I, uh... I lost my train of thought. You know, I've also noticed Xion's not really into the same kind of food most Renans are. Could be it's got something to do with the way she grew up. That's so me! Even when I was little, I was all about food that gives me strength. All meat, all the time! And I guess Kisara is so good at cooking fish, because she can catch them herself. I'm only good with fish because it used to be the easiest thing to get. When you work with something long enough, it comes naturally to you. I like fish just fine, but what I really like about your cooking is how it tastes homemade. It reminds me of what my mom used to make. Really? You know, I used to cook a lot of meals for younger kids, and they said the same thing. When you get down to it, I guess the things a person cooks and the foods they like say a lot about the way they've lived. Shion, could we talk a moment? <sighs> mm. I thought you had something to talk about. I was waiting on you. Not really. Why? Should I leave you alone when I don't? No, it's fine. We used to really have to force these conversations when we started talking to each other, didn't we? To say the least. <laughs> Hey. What is it? Do you think you'd like to make something together? Make what exactly? Just if you wanna... Just if you wanna make dinner together. What did you think I meant? Huh? Dinner? Uh... Oh! Oh! Dinner! Yes! Yes, of course! Dinner! Right! What did you think I was talking about? No, it's nothing. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> anyway, what did you have in mind? Well, do you recognize these ingredients? This is... Wait, is this? So you remember? That's right. We're going to fix the very first meal we ever had together. Although, I remember it not being well received when we had it. You still remember that, huh? I'm sorry, Xion. I'm just teasing you, Alfin. 
I picked this recipe because it's easy to make, and I thought it would be a good choice for dinner, too. Anyway, let's get to work. With both of us making it, we should be finished in no time. I never thought we'd end up eating alone like this again. Just the two of us. Yeah. So much has changed when you look back on it. Well, I guess maybe not what we're eating, but still. No, I'd say even that's changed too, in a sense. Our meals are a whole lot better now. True. We've both come quite a long way in the culinary arts. That's not exactly what I mean. How do I put it? It feels like eating together is a lot more enjoyable than it used to be. Yeah, I get what you mean. Even after our battles are done, when Dana is saved and our mission is finished, we'll probably still be sitting down to dinner like this, night after night. Yep, I doubt that much will change. You've always got to eat at some point. I hope our dinners will always feel like this. Maybe not exactly like this. Hopefully we won't still be camping out. Oh, no, not at all. I meant in a nice, warm house. One with a roof over our heads and a proper fireplace, instead of an open campfire. And real chairs instead of these logs? Nice plates and silverware on a big dining table. Oh, and a proper kitchen. That'd be nice, too. And when it's time to fix dinner, we'll be in that kitchen. Standing side by side. <laughs> Whoops. Looks like we made too much. <laughs> I don't think we'll be able to finish all this. Yeah, you're right. I'll see if anybody else is still awake. I'd really hate to have to throw it away. Side by side, huh? I'm looking forward to breakfast. Did you get enough sleep? That was quite the little adventure we went on. Hey, Rinwell, tell me about your parents. What were they like? They were kind. That's the part I like to remember. They could also be strict, though, especially when it came to magic. I never understood why I had to work so hard to learn magic. Why we couldn't just be done with it and live openly like everyone else. Needless to say, that didn't go over well. Of course, if I'd had known that one day I'd be doing this, I would have taken my studies more seriously. What about your parents? Same deal. Run through the mill. Told constantly that training was the only way to survive in a world like this. It got bad enough that I ended up running away and siding with the Renans of all people. And now, I've got that training to thank for being alive. I know how that feels. The first time we met, you risked using your magic to stop me from kicking my dad's ass. You could have done anything else. You could have ignored it. So, why? Yeah, I guess something about Zephyr reminded me of my own father. You don't say. So, did your pops and mine look a lot like each other? Not really. Not at all, in fact. I don't know how to explain it. I just felt a resemblance, I guess. Wow. Well, I won't pretend I understand, but I'm glad. Your dad must have been a great guy. He was. Maybe it's the snow soaking up all the sound, but something about Cislodia always feels mysterious to me. Solemn, almost. When it comes to solemnity, I'd say our own Ottolina Palace is no slouch. I won't argue with you there. 
Still, that azure tint of the shadows on the silvery white snow, it has a certain indescribable quality. Indeed. It was boorish of me to even suggest such a comparison. All I know is it's freaking cold. Still, more pleasant now that the locals aren't quite as frosty towards us. Hm. Well, excuse me if I'm too frosty for your warm self. Oh, come on! You know I didn't mean you. Besides, really, I'm the one who... How about we stop getting hung up on the past for a change? Take what you've learned and put it to use in the future instead. An unexamined past can be just as dangerous in its own right. Better that than obsessing over it like a certain someone I know. Kisara doesn't mince her words, does she? I could say the same thing about one or two of the other women around here. Tell me about it. I think I'll refrain from commenting on this one. Poodle, I've got some dried fish for you. You want some? Huh. Forget that. Doesn't some tasty red meat sound better, boy? <laughs> hey! Stop trying to coax him away with treats! Get your own adorable sidekick if you're so desperate for one! <laughs> he appears to enjoy being the center of attention. Funny how things change. He and Rinwell used to be joined at the hip, or shoulder to Talon. It's not just Hoodle who's become more trusting. Isn't that so, Rinwell? They do say pets and their owners act alike. I suppose since we've been together, I've done my share of coming out of my own shell, too. Well, then, I guess with you and Hoodle, that makes us all one big, happy family. Sometimes when I'm deep in thought, Hoodle will come over and sit next to me. I only wish I could actually pet him. Oh, you will someday. You won't believe how soft he is. Wish I had that problem. I'm lucky if I can so much as look at old feather brain without him trying to claw me to ribbons. Really? He seems tame enough around everyone else. Maybe it's just Hoodle's way of establishing dominance? That's dogs, not owls. What's going on when Hoodle pecks at you? Uh, I don't know. Like when I'm talking to Rinwell, it's like he's trying to muscle me out or something. Unless... Wait. You don't suppose I make him jealous? Come again? <laughs> Ow! Ah, get off of me, you insecure fluff ball! <laughs> I rather think they make a good comedic pairing. We should be able to cook here. You can never be too prepared, but did we have to spend so much?
Sure is good to be back in the pleasant climes of Menencia. Especially after the extremes of some of the other regions we visited. Definitely. Your country is beautiful. You do me an honor. However, this place was never mine to own. I didn't mean it that way. Though, I guess technically you weren't born here either. Native or not, that doesn't change the feelings you had for the place. If I were you, I'd try to take a little pride in people's compliments. Allow myself to feel pride, huh? That sounds like no easy task. Nothing sounds easy when you overthink things the way you do. It must be exhausting. He's always worrying about something. It's probably what gives him his eye for detail. That's just the way he is. Yeah, so we'd noticed. Let's change the subject, shall we? It's a wonder so many things coincided to bring us here. Alfin's awakening, Shion's decision to revolt, the Danon uprising in Calaglia, the crown contest's final, sputtering throws. Zephyr's being in the right place at the right time. The fact that you happen to be a lord just as this was all going on. It's almost as if we were brought together by design. By someone who wanted to bring down the system. No, enough hand of destiny talk. We did this on our own steam. It's our responsibility to see it through. Did Law just utter a pearl of wisdom? I do think about things, you know. Just what do you take me for exactly? Honestly? Um, I always sort of pegged you as a likable dolt. What the hell makes me a dolt, you dolt? I mean, she did say he was a likable dolt, didn't she? Let's refrain from poking this particular zoogle any further. Some lessons just can't be taught. Not to dolts, anyway. Hey, Kisara. What's your secret for putting up with Dohalim? I don't know how you managed to deal with him. Secret? Oh, I don't think it's as difficult as all that, really. Could have had me fooled. Anyone who waxes lyrical on the aesthetic qualities of cactus thorns is a step too far for me. And those poetic flourishes he sneaks into regular conversation? How am I supposed to react? He likes the sound of his own voice, that's for sure. I say let him have his fun. No need to try and understand anything he says. Has he always been like that? He didn't seem as on edge all the time back in Menencia. Though he was my superior back then. So who's to say what I didn't see? The Lord of Cislodia hid in plain sight while a crony posing as him carried out all his business. What if the Lord we met in Vicent was really... An imposter? Dohalim? Hardly. Like it or not, that's him all right. In all his flamboyant, circumloquacious glory. <laughs> I'd like to see someone try to impersonate that on a daily basis. Come to think of it, what with being a lord and all, he's probably never had anyone to speak to on an equal basis. It wouldn't surprise me. Having you guys around, having a family in a way, must be what's helped him change. A little heads up on some of his eccentricities would have been nice. <laughs> it's those eccentricities that make him who he is. We've reached our destination. Hmm. 
<laughs> Doing some thinking? Nah. It just occurred to me that our journey's been going for a while now. Is it a wonder to you our group has held together this long? Maybe. We've got Danins, Renans, a Lord, a Mage, and even a guy from another time. Yet here we all are, leaning on each other as travel companions. It's like a minor miracle. If anything, I'd say it's proof. Proof that as long as we accept each other for who we are, we can all get along. And, with understanding, comes togetherness. Yeah, we are more than enough evidence of that. I've always had a thorny relationship with others. Quite literally, as it happens. I figured that it was easier to give up on intimacy, rather than having to go through all of the pain of rejection. I mean, is it any wonder I grew thorns around my heart, too? But now... Right. Now... I still have my thorns, of course. But they don't cover my heart. I know now that there is more than one way for people to relate to one another. It was you and everyone else here that taught me that. Everyone that you brought together, Alfin. It wasn't just me. I mean, sure, I invited a few folks to join us, but... Swordsmanship's about all I have to offer. Everyone's taught and supported me just as much as I have them. You see? That's what I'm talking about. What do you mean? I mean, you're fine just as you are. The bonds that you form with others, they shine more brightly because they're mutual. It's not just one bond for you. It's many, each with a heart of its own. That's what makes them special. I hope everyone isn't pushing themselves too hard. Hey, Law. Been training? Yeah, I guess I got a little carried away. You think this is bad, you should see the state of my underwear. Yeah, a word of advice. You might want to refrain from mentioning that stuff around girls. Ones without a military history, especially. Man, can you imagine Rinwell's face? She'd have a nervous breakdown. I meant in general, but you sure mention her a lot, you know. Huh? Oh, I, uh, I, you know, she's always there, even when you least expect it. Springs to mind easily. Either that, or maybe some part of you is subconsciously always wishing she was there. May the trials and tribulations of young romance never change. R romance? Like I'd be interested in that know-it-all tomboy. I'm more about mature women. Someone more like Kisara. You know, I used to be a tomboy, too, when I was Rinwell's age. Look, it's not tomboys I have anything against. But come on, you've got to admit she can be a lot to handle. Hey, I miss anything? What's all the fuss about? Uh, Rinwell. Hmm. <laughs> Thunder Blade! Ha! What the hell was that for? A little birdie told me you were speaking about me behind my back. <sighs> From the looks of it, I'd say you've got yourself a rival. It wouldn't be called the Spring of Youth without a little storm every now and then. Hey, Xion. How are you and Alfin getting on these days? That's a little out of the blue. Why do you ask? Sorry, it's just... I don't know, I'm just curious, I guess. I mean... A lot's changed now he's got his senses back and all. <laughs> I suppose you're right. Well, to tell you the truth, if he'd been the way he is now back when I'd first met him, I probably wouldn't have gotten this involved. But then, if we hadn't met like we did, then I never would have experienced these feelings, so... <sighs> I guess... it's complicated. I can imagine. I know it's not the same thing, but I know what it feels like to have someone you love who's out of reach. 
Because of Nagal. Alfin's still alive. It's not too late, you know. And after all, who can say what the future holds? I think if I were you, I'd take things as they come for now. Besides, touch isn't everything. I've never touched you, Xion. But that doesn't stop you from knowing that I care about you, right? That's true. But I do remember back when we first met, you made it plenty clear you weren't my biggest fan. But, but that was a long time ago. There were lots of things I didn't understand back then. Uh, not that that's the point. Don't worry, I'm only teasing. I know what you mean. Thank you. And you're right. There are ways to convey your feelings besides just touching. I'll say. Cooking immediately springs to mind. And if it's someone's favorite dish, all the better. If there's something on your mind that you want to tell him, why not try appealing directly to his stomach? You might just have a point. I'll give it a shot. Uh-oh. If it's Alphen's palate you're appealing to, that doesn't bode well for the rest of us. Well, well, friendship is about being supportive. Sometimes we just have to do our best and take one for the team, right? Even after staying here, we never truly got to the bottom of what makes this realm's citizens tick. Renan and Danon are meaningless distinctions here. To have one's own mind is strictly forbidden. All that matters is blind obedience. That might be the case now, but it can't always have been like that. There must have been something more. Once, maybe. Question is, is that something still salvageable? If it's not, we'll just have to make something new. No, not we. They've had enough foisted on them as it is. You're right. It's time the people here had the chance to forge their own path. That's not to say it'll be easy, but it will be worthwhile. These things take time to... What the? An ambush? S sorry Sorry. There was a huge flying bug and I sort of shot without thinking. A bug? You mean like a Zugal? Something tells me she would have shot it, whether it was a Zugal or not. This realm is teeming with humid forests. It's only natural insects would feel more at home here than Menencia. In fact, I seem to recall reading somewhere that bugs around these parts lay their eggs in human food to ensure healthy incubation. <laughs> Sounds like they're tougher than they look. Wha what about you, Alfin? Bugs don't creep you out? I wouldn't say I was their number one fan. Mind you, if times get desperate enough, I've been known to eat them. Insects as a culinary option, you say? What kind of seasoning are we talking? Dohalim, I don't think he was talking about cooking them. Hey, a lizard! <laughs> Shion, could we talk a moment? I think it's time we go to sleep. Come on, guys. We've got lots to do. I never thought about this until now, Alfin. But doesn't it get hot wearing that armor all the time? You feel heat and cold again, don't you? Admittedly, yeah. It can get pretty toasty in this thing. Is it hard when your back starts to itch? Oh, you bet. Plus, my shoulders get stiff wearing it, even if it's not all that heavy. Kisara looks like she manages all right with her armor. Armor takes a strong body and a stout heart. Spoken like a true guardsman. Not that I really get what you mean. The more I think about it, the more I realize what a pain it must be. Like, what do you do when you need to take a leak? Ew! That part can be a bit of a pain, yeah. More things to take off. That sucks, man. Wouldn't it be easier if you just walked around outside of your armor most of the time instead? You never know when the enemy might attack. As tempting as it might be to take it off, it's not worth getting killed over. So basically, you're screwed if you ever get attacked while taking a dump. 
Right, Rinwell? Are you doing this on purpose? That thing looks pretty menacing. Ah, nothing we can't handle. Seriously? Is this a joke? I'll smash you! It's a duel of the arts! Now, pull it freely! Take it down! Arts too. You can see about that. In this one, Run. take this. Inferno Run away. Dragon Shell. Run Inferno Pie. You can see about that. Run away. Just run. Just get it. Run away. Ignis. Run it. 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 Run Well, look who's in a bright and shiny mood. That was quite the little adventure we went on. I see a cat. I wonder how Zari's doing. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> wow! <sighs> Thank you.
<laughs> Great. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could get an examination. Well, if you say so. Let me see. Uh, yes, you're in well, all right? Well, if only your brain could keep up with your mouth. What? Yes! Yes! Hmm? <sighs> Night! Sorry. Yes. Just great. <laughs> hmm. White, soft, and fluffy items. Is that description supposed to be figurative or literal? Let's check anything in the area that looks edible. Yes! What? Finally made it. What do you all say to taking the path less trodden for once? Path? I don't see any path. Do you mean that thing that looks like an animal trail? Path may be a generous term. I'm assuming you know where it leads? Hmm. My gut says to a bridge. Uh-huh. Hoodle says your gut's wrong. Really? Well, it is definitely in the right general direction. Not that main roads are necessarily danger-free, but he does have an uncanny knack for insisting on some strange and unique routes. Elfin always did like a challenge. Can't say I appreciate some of the more daredevil ways he's taken us, though. 
Like the landslide he insisted was a shortcut before disappearing off the edge, nearly gave me a heart attack. I'll say, yet the intrepid explorer looked as happy as a pig in muck. Probably best we stick to doing our own orienteering in the future. Hey, so what about this route then? Maybe if we pretend we can't hear him. Don't you think the path forward is fraught enough without making extra problems for ourselves? Maybe best to reel it back. Good point. I say we stick to the main track like regular travelers for once. Uh, guys? <sighs> I will break down this wall! <laughs> you worked hard today too, didn't you, sweetie? What? Hey, guys, I don't see any of our food anywhere. What? I know. The bag we kept it all in has vanished. <sighs> Some Zoogles must have gotten in behind us and swiped the whole thing while we were fighting. What? Huh? What are you guys talking about? This affects you, too, you know. We lost all our food, including all those sweets you love so freaking much. What? How could this happen? Those sweets are the highlight of my day. Oh, so hungry. Hunger is like that. The moment you know there's nothing you can do about it, it becomes that much more unbearable. Whoever did this, I swear I'm gonna make them pay for stealing our supplies. <sighs> All that's left now is this one lonesome apple. <gasps> Law? What? Hey, don't look at me like that. I picked this apple myself. I'm not just gonna... Food. Hand it over. <laughs> Stay away! <laughs> hmm. Hey, I'm back. Uh, huh? What the heck happened here? <sighs> Only a pointed reminder of how dangerous a food shortage can be in a collective. A serious problem indeed. And one we should all be mindful of. I... I see. Does it have anything to do with why you're holding our food supply bag behind your back? Ah! You should get some shut-eye. It's a brand new day, everyone. Let's greet the dawn. Hmm, a laudable sentiment. Um, hey, is Dohalim's shirt on backwards? Suffice it to say, mornings aren't his strong suit. Yeah! Hmm? <laughs> hmm. <sighs> How did it come to this? You're a beautiful woman, Xion. That's a good thing, right? Wait, Kisara. Hey, Kisara. <sighs> How did it come to this?
That Zoogle's in our way. I'm ready to fight it any time you are. This should make for some good weapon crafting material. <laughs> Just great. Well, I'm really tired today for some reason. Anyway, I should get to work on dinner. 
Oh, we already started. We've got it covered tonight, Kisara. Just relax and leave it to us. Uh, I see. Well, I'll leave it to you then. We don't have a lot of ingredients, though, so don't go overboard, okay? Guess I'll do some laundry instead. Hmm? What are you two doing? What does it look like? We're doing laundry. Obviously. Yeah, I guess you are. You're not trying to clean them by smacking them around again, are you? Of course not. I have a good memory. Once someone yells at me, I don't forget it. He's fine, Kisara. I've been keeping an eye on him, and there haven't been any problems. Oh, good. If you say so, Alfin, then I have nothing to worry about. Hey, how come you don't trust me when I say it? Just don't squeeze too hard or else you'll damage the fabric, okay? Yeah, I get it. You know, if you keep making that face, it's gonna stick that way. What was that? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. <clears throat> well, if there's nothing for me to do, I guess I'll head back. I suppose I should take this as a sign of how much they've all grown, but... Oh, Dohalim. What are you doing here? Simply admiring our campfire as I await dinner. I find watching the flames dance can be rather inspiring. <laughs> Just the same as always, then. Although I'm sort of relieved. Oh? And here I thought you were planning to scold me. Why? Did you want to be scolded, too? No, I wasn't saying that. Hmm. The night is aglow with star and firelight. Yet what I hold most dear are the words of a friend. That's not like your usual poetry. Are you trying to tell me something? Brimming is thy soul with words yet unspoken. <laughs> okay, I get it. You want me to talk to you about it. To hear your words of worry, I can but sit and wait. I said I get it. I guess I'm just struggling with how capable everyone's become these days. I'm proud of them, but I'm not sure what I contribute to the team anymore. So, I guess it's been troubling me a bit. Hmm. They don't need me for chores or fighting anymore. And I don't have much in the way of feminine charm. But aside from being a soldier, do I have anything else to offer? And if not, then what good am I? I can't help worrying about it. Hmm. Lost though you may be, with Utopia but a dream, life without you would be no life at all. <sighs> Dohalim, you're right. I still have Nagal's dream left to fulfill. And we still have the fight ahead of us to overcome. With you by my side, even the bitter times can taste sweet. Okay, I think that's enough poetry for one day. Hey, dinner's ready! Wow, you look really happy, Kisara. Uh, oh? I'm just excited to see what you two have cooked up. Now let's sit down and enjoy it already. Dohaling, all of your replies last night were poems. What was that all about? Hmm. I suppose I was struck with poetic inspiration. Did it strike your fancy? Yes. I found it to be quite elegant. I'm afraid my memory of them is a bit faint. Could I trouble you to recite them for me? No, you cannot. Remember them yourself. Have you guys checked your equipment lately? 